Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, find minimum in rotated sorted array 2. And before I start with this question, I just want to say that if there is any specific question that you want me to solve, just let me know down in the comments and I will try to get it solved. Okay, so in the question, suppose an array sorted in ascending order is rotated at some pivot unknown to you beforehand. So we have the sorted area over here, but at some point it got rotated. So it's still sorted, but it's not in the same order. So if you start reading it from here, so this is the pivot point. So 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you read it that way, it's still sorted, but just got rotated. Okay, so now we need to find the minimum element and the array could contain duplicates. So let's look at a quick example of how we can do this. So let's assume that this out over here is our input 4456701112. So it does contain some duplicates, so let's see how we can work with that. So before we actually get into a while loop, and we are going to be performing a binary search to solve this. If you don't know what that is, I will show you what that actually is. So before we do that, we need to establish a few edge cases. So if our input has a length, of one, then in that case, we're just going to return wherever that element is. So we're just going to return wherever it's at the zeroth index. Okay, so that's one of our cases. And the second is, what if our input as it is, is already in ascending order? So how do we actually know if that's the case? So to see that, what we're going to do is, we're going to see if the whatever is at the zeroth index is less than whatever is at the last index. So negative one just means the very last element. So in this case, if this is true, then we know that our array is already sorted and we're just going to return nums zero. So these are going to be a two edge, edge cases. And if we do get past this, we're going to go inside of our while loop and do a binary search. Like every binary search, you start off with assigning a left value and a right value. So we're going to start off with assigning the left value being the left, uh, the, whatever is at the zeroth index. And our right value is going to be starting from the ending of our array. So now what we're going to do is since our array can contain duplicates, we're going to check for duplicates. So now we're going to see, so we're going to start off with the right. So if the element before it is equal to two, that means that we have a duplicate, but we don't. So we're just going to let that be. But now once we go to left, if you look at this, the element after this has a value of four. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to change our pointer from this to the first index. So from the zero to the first index. Now we're going to check again if the next element has the same value as four. It doesn't. So now we're going to let it be as it is. And now we can start with our search. So as with every binary search, we need to first find a middle value. So how can we find that middle value? So all you do is you add whatever the left index is plus the right index and divide that by two. So in this case, the left is at an index of one and right is at an index of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's 10 divided by two, which is nothing else but five. So whatever is at the fifth index is gonna be our middle value. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this over here is our middle value. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compare our middle value to the right value. And what are we actually going to do with comparing that? We're going to change our pointer location accordingly. All right. So we have two cases. If our middle value is greater than the right value, then in that case, what we're going to do is we know that the answer for the smallest number is going to be on the right side. So we're going to change our left pointer to whatever is after the middle value. So our left pointer is going to equal to m plus 1. So this is if middle is greater than uh, our right value. But if our right value is greater than our middle value, then that means the smallest number is on the left. But in this case, our right value is not going to be m minus 1. It's just going to be m because the middle value could possibly be the smallest number. 
and conveniently in this example that is exactly what happens all right so let's implement this inside of our example and see what that looks like all right so now our middle value is less than our right value so that means that our smallest number is going to be towards the left so in that case we're going to change our right value so i'm going to cross this out and it's going to be where the middle value is so this over here is going to become our right value and since we changed our right value our middle value also changes so we have left at an index of one and we have the middle one at an in index of zero one two three four five so one plus five divided by two which is three so our middle value is going to be at an index of 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is what we're going to be taking our middle value as. Now we're going to perform the same thing again. Uh, so middle is greater than the right. So that means our answer is on the right side. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to change our left value. So we're going to cross both of these out. And our left value is going to be whatever is at the middle plus 1. So 7 is our left value. So now again, this is gonna be our last time. So we're gonna do whatever the left index is at plus whatever the right index is at. So zero, one, two, three, four, plus five divided by two. So that's, that's actually 4.5. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do integer division. So no matter what we get, we're just gonna round it down. So we're gonna change this to a four. So we're going to look at the fourth index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the same as 7. So now this is going to be our middle. I know it's a little uh, clustered, but hopefully it still makes sense. So this over here is now our middle. Now we compare the middle to our right. So in this case, 7 is greater than 0. So that does mean that our value is going to be on the right-hand side. So now we're going to change our left value to m plus 1. So we're going to cross this, we're going to cross this, and this is now our left value. And if you notice, the left value is the same as our right value. And at this point, we're going to end up store, stopping our binary search, and we're just going to return this value. And that's correct. 0 is the smallest area number. Okay, and one more thing if you notice, like you could see all the elements that we visited. So we visited a total of, we visited this element, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So out of 9 elements, we only visited 6. But if we were to do a linear search, we would have to visit each and every one of them. So in this case, our time complexity on the worst case is big O, N. But otherwise, we can get it for a lot faster. All right, so now let's implement this in code, which is a lot easier to do once you understand what's actually going on. As usual, I'm going to be using Python in order to solve this. So now let's first look at our edge cases. So we're going to look at our, the length of our numbers. And if that is equal to 1, we're just going to return whatever is at the 0th index. Now we're going to check if our array is sorted beforehand. And in that case, nums0, whatever is at the 0th index, is going to be less than whatever the last element is so whatever is at the last index so in that case we're just going to return nums zero and i'm just going to go back here since i forgot to type return okay so that takes care of both of our edge cases now we can establish our left and right variables so our left is going to be equal to zero and our right is going to be the length of our numbers minus one okay so now that we have this we can go inside of our while loop so while left is less than or equal to right, we're going to keep going until that happens. So now that we have this, we're going to check for repetitions on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So while our left is less than our right and the numbers, so whatever number is at the left index is the same as the next one. So it's the same as whatever index whatever number is at the index of left plus one. So in that case, that means that we have a repetition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the value of our left by one. So now we're gonna do the same thing, but for the right, val right value. So while our left is greater than our right and nums right, so whatever is at the rightmost, 
is equal to nums r minus one, so one index before it. So that means that we do have repetition. In this case, we're gonna decrease our right value by one. Okay, so now we've taken care of our repetitions. Now we can establish our mid variable. So our mid variable is nothing else but left plus right, and we're gonna do integer division on it. Just gonna put this in brackets. Okay, so now we're gonna just do the same conditions that we looked at. So if nums mid is greater than nums right, then in that case, we're just our, we're gonna change our left value to the mid value plus one. But if this is not the case, then our right value is gonna become our mid value. And after we do all of this, we're gonna go outside of our while loop and we're just gonna return whatever is at the lowest value. So return nums and then left. Okay, so let's submit this and let's see what happens. Okay, so it seems that I've misspelled. So instead of writing nums, I wrote num on line number six. Okay, so this over here is supposed to be nums. Hopefully that fixes it, submit. Okay, and one more thing actually, in our while loop, it's just supposed to be while our left is less than right. We don't need to say equal to or less than. All right, so that should solve our problem. So submit it. Okay, and as you can see, our results did get accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have any questions or if you have any better solution to solve this. And again, if you want me to solve anything specifically, just let me know. And thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.